Hi everyone, I know you're used to seeing these interviews on Zoom where people are at a distance, but this one I'm lucky enough to get to do face-to-face, -face, in person, and bring directly to you. I am with Adam Elsesser, and he is the CEO of Penumbra. Now this is a medical device company that really saves lives. But before he was CEO of this publicly traded company, he actually has a pretty cool entrepreneurial story where he started out in commercial real estate law and then transitioned to doing a startup. And then that sort of got bought out. So now he's a CEO. So Adam, thanks for joining us yeah, so we can talk about that journey. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, it, it's an unusual story. A lot of people ask. I, I used to be a lawyer uh, in my first part of my uh, career and through really chance, um, uh, in the late 90s, uh, I was happening to have dinner with my best friend from college, who uh, is a physician that does what's called neurointervention, sort of catheter-based uh, medicine uh, in people's uh, brains. And we were having dinner, and he was very excited about uh, a particular area uh, and devices that he thought could be made to help uh, stroke patients. Um, and uh, in his enthusiasm, he kept talking and talking and talking at dinner. Uh, about uh, this idea, and I didn't know anything about it. Uh, and to be very candid, uh, uh, maybe now slightly embarrassed to, to say, um, I just wanted him to stop talking about it because I, I wanted to talk about something else. Um, so I said to him, again, it was 1998 when everything in my area, Silicon Valley, was, was going crazy. Yeah. Uh, so I said, well, just start a company and, and make this device. It, it's not that hard. Um, uh, I wasn't very serious about it, um, uh, uh, and, and it did the trick the next, the rest of the dinner we talked about other things. Uh, mm -hmm. I hadn't anticipated, however, that um, the next day uh, he would call uh, while I was still in New York to say, can we get together to start the company that you promised me last night that we would start. Um, so uh, somewhat reluctantly we got together and, and laid out a business plan for uh, Smart Therapeutics, which was the company we started about a month later. Let's talk about now internally. You have over 400 employees. Well, 1,400. 1,400. Oh, I, I missed a one on that. My fault. My <laughs> fault. So over 1,400 employees. And they all, I mean, they all have different motivations and reasons for having a job. Mm -hmm. But we know from research that a big reason people stay with a company is because a company's purpose is something that they take on as their own. So what do you do? as a CEO, as a leadership team, to communicate these type of events and this type of feeling to your employees? Well, there, there are a lot of things we've done over the years, and, and sometimes uh, we wish we did even more, um, but uh, you know, you, you run out of uh, sometimes time. But we always communicate uh, uh, right at the beginning of their uh, joining the company. In fact, I have a tradition that is now uh, uh, 10 years old of meeting every week with all the new employees that week. And we've been hiring uh, at a rate of almost 400 people a year. So every week there can be 20 plus uh, new employees that, that start. And whether they're senior people or uh, mid-level folks or uh, hourly production workers, we do all our own manufacturing, uh, they all come together uh, and I spend uh, about half an hour describing why we started the company the goal of making products that can really impact uh, the clinical outcomes of patients and I describe uh, some of the patients that I have met and, and what they've uh, felt like and, and said to, to us uh, uh, for the company. Uh, I, I describe sort of our culture uh, and then I spend the rest of the time opening it up to them to ask questions mm -hmm. and I made a pledge um, many years ago that I will answer every single question uh, no matter what it is. And for many years, the questions stayed very focused on uh, the business, but I think as the years have gone, uh, people have gotten a little more comfortable, uh, maybe with my style, uh, and now the questions become actually quite personal sometimes. Uh, but I have still answered every single one. <laughs> there the you questions. go. Um, and I think that sets a real tone, uh, you know, for the culture of the company and, and what it matters, that uh, we're a place where uh, we do very important work that uh, we're in the Bay Area, in sort of the heart of uh, you know, the tech world, and many of these people could work in jobs that, that maybe have a, a higher profile or with mm -hmm. bigger names that um, may be uh, sexy in that respect. Um, but many of the people have picked working uh, at Penumbra 
because of that direct connection with uh, their work has an impact on uh, patients every single day. And we try to remind them of that regularly, whether it's through these meetings that I've described or videos that we can do with patients uh, and, and retelling the stories uh, that we've heard from patients and, the, and really the gratitude that we, we get from the patients.